All right, well, it looks like we're all here. So we'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, July 21st, 2021 to order. Uh, in attendance is David Phil, Jane Nevin Smith, John Weskevitz, Joyce Chunglo, and Amy Parsons. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. Uh, let's see. First order of business is the consent agenda. And we have warrants, which I will let Jennifer read. Uh, warrant PR 2128, PR 2202, WP 2155-2, WP 2155-S-2, AP 2201-S, AP 2201, AP 2202, PR 2201, PR 2127, <laughs> AP 2202s wp 2155s wp 2155 okay and we have the approval of the contract for veteran services between the town of hadley and the city of northampton we have a banner approval for the hopkins academy team champion baseball team championship uh, we have a class two auto dealer license transfer mountain view auto sales from wayne aslin to uh patricia mccarthy that's it. Could I get David, a motion? I, David, I was going to say, I do believe Patricia is here. Okay. Bill okay. moved. All right. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And uh, if there's no discussion on the consent agenda, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, we are going to skip down to uh, the police department appointment next 6.1. And uh, let's see. David. Yes. Can I ask that y'all take up the decision on the class two auto dealer license and the transfer with the fee? Because um, I do have to issue a new license, and I believe that Patricia wanted to address that. Okay. Uh, Patricia, if you're here, will you explain what the circumstances are and uh, what you're trying to do? Yes, sir. My husband passed away, um, and uh, I want to continue the business, um, and I'll put it in my name. And um, if possible, could you waive the fee because it's already paid for this year? I'll make a motion to do that, Patricia. We're sorry for your loss. Um, I certainly feel that it's the same business, um, just a matter of transferring uh, your name onto it um, since your husband has passed. So I, I'm going to ask to waive the fee for you. I second that motion. A motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any other discussion on that? Waiving the fee? Jennifer, go ahead. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Patricia, and uh, good luck with uh, the ongoing business. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, all right. Now we'll go to Chief Mason for the police department appointment. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking this up early. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if Alex is actually on the call. Uh, he works three to 11 shift um, at the Sheriff's Department. So he is probably uh, behind bars right now. <laughs> he, uh, can't, uh, he may not be able to get on the meeting, but I uh, just have a short uh, bio to read about him. Alex, uh, I'll be recommending for appointment as a special police officer, just as we did at the last meeting. This will round out uh, and complete uh, the hiring process that we that we began a while ago. Alex graduated from Belchertown High School in 2016, and he earned his bachelor's degree in legal studies from UMass Amherst in 2020. And he has also attended uh, Wenick uh, as a um, higher education school. He graduated from the Western Mass Reserve Academy in 2019. Uh, he has worked as a security officer uh, at Stacker's Pub in Amherst. Uh, he was a loss prevention manager 
um, as well uh, in, from 2018 to 2019. And he, as I mentioned, he currently works at the Hampshire County Sheriff's Department. He is not a corrections officer. He actually works uh, as a uh, more of a, as a residential advisor uh, within their minimum security inmate population to try to transition inmates uh, back to the uh, standard population. So uh, based upon that, based upon his background check being completed, uh, I would like to recommend him for um, appointment as a special police officer here in Hadley. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this appointment? Jennifer? Roll call, Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Chunkaloo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, can, can I just, I wanted to say something to Mike tonight too, since you were going to be on. May I do that now? Sure. sure. Um, I had the, I don't know say if it's an opportunity or not, but I had to call EMS uh, the other night and uh, Officer Smith responded. Um, he's a very compassionate, kind officer. And I just want to thank him for how he uh, reacted in the situation that, that we had. And um, I also commend our action ambulance service for their service. And they're also compassion and kindness also. So uh, thank you all um, for how it went out uh, this past week. Thank you, Joyce. I'm glad everything uh, worked out okay. And I will make sure I let them know. Yes, please do. Thank you. I will. All right, so then uh, while the chief is still here, we're gonna jump down to 6.2 illegal dumping fine waiver request. Hey, yep. Hey, uh, chief, how are we doing with uh, staff number wise? Uh, right now we are uh, back to full staffing. We have one officer uh, that was uh, presented at the last meeting to be the replacement for our one open full-time position. Uh, he does have to attend the police academy. Uh, we're hoping in October, uh, we have them on the wait list right now, but um, we're at full staffing right now. The issue, obviously, it's probably not the best time to get into it, but you've seen all of my emails and everything about how the reform bill is going to affect how we handle staffing here. One of the things that it's going to significantly change is that you probably will not see us hire anyone else in this capacity uh, as a special police officer. There will be no more reserve intermittent academy that qualifies people within this level of, of police work. They are going to have to have a full-time police academy or otherwise equivalent training. So as we move forward uh, in law enforcement and specifically here in Hadley, we are going to have to uh, make some changes to uh, ensure that we can continue to keep the staff that we have or find the best possible suitable replacements uh, for them because the pool of applicants who uh, people who want to become police officers is rapidly shrinking. But right now we're okay. Knock on wood. That, that's a blessing in itself for what's what's been going on. Um, you can see on either side of us uh, what they're trying to form and do. Uh, maybe we can catch some of those that have already gone to other police departments or have been uh, let go from the apartments or just didn't want to be involved in these other departments. So sometimes there might be an opportunity out there that'll come knocking. So you know, we'll just hope so. You know, why I asked chief is uh, with the construction coming up eventually by the end of the year, possibly, I mean, are we going to be understaffed or? Uh, our first priority always, regardless of what's going on as far as construction goes, is always going to be staffing um, to ensure that things like what Joyce just mentioned uh, are taken care of first. Our, our first priority is taking care of, uh, you know, calls for service. Um, we do have safeguards in place for things like this, this construction project to go outside of town. We have several other places that we can call. My guess is, is that you will see Hadley officers out there, at least at the start. And then by the time they get burned out and it's uh, 100 degrees coming down from the sun and 120 degrees coming up from the fresh pavement, you'll see uh, 
maybe some troopers or uh, anybody else we can find out there who wants to work those jobs, but we will get them filled, John. All right. Uh, 6.2, illegal dumping fine waiver request. Chief, uh, would you like to talk about this? Or Chris Okafer, I believe, is here from the DPW. And uh, Mr. Shattuck is on the line as well. Yep. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will yield to the police chief to if he has something to say. Otherwise, I have, I will continue. Chief, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Shadik uh, was, um, we, we've, we've always, uh, every so often, we find illegal dumping. But, um, and so this time around, we had to set up our camera to, we were determined to, the camera, but the purpose of the camera was actually for us to get somebody because somebody was also um, defacing the cemetery. Uh, illegal uh, messing up with the dog uh, feces and other things. So we were trying to find out how we can get this individual. So we had, so we we decided to use that camera at uh, DPW Yard. And um, lo and behold, Mr. Wadi was caught on the camera. So we we also informed the police. Um, and then we felt that uh, it might be a good idea to not allow this to pass by, if nothing else, uh, to bring this individual before the select board. So in our, we, we chose to find him the amount we we're finding him, the 250, based on the cost for labor and the equipment. We did not we did not uh, impose any fine. And so we thought he would take that and do not bring us to a point where either the select board, we impose a fine or something more, more um, serious. So he contacted me uh, when he got our, 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 um, our invoice. And I told him that um, he was asking for leniency. I told him that uh, I cannot I don't have the authority to give a leniency that the only the select board or the town administrator would be the right place to go. But that um, if I were to be him, I would just pay the 250 and run away and never to come back. I said, but if he has a better case, the select board may also consider that. So that is where we are. The reason why we imposed the 250 was um, I had two labels. And also, we also had equipment and operator who had to haul the stuff into the container and uh, we also disposed them off. So that's how we, so it was just the cost for our staff, the two hours, two labels, and then also our backhoe and, and our loader that we used to load the, um, the dump and uh, that's how we arrive at that money. We 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 also felt it might be a good um, case study for the for us to pre present before the the board. What actually was the uh, materials that you had to collect? He it was a mixture of uh, grass clippings, poles, and uh, and uh, dirt that he. We don't know where he got them from, or if he's if he's from his yard, or if he's some commercial entity. So, Chief, uh, so there there is no uh, police department imposed fine here. It's just for the cost of the cleanup. What, what would be the fine for dumping, typically, if the police department did that? So, um, yeah, everything Chris said is is accurate. Uh, and the fine, what, what the fine would be is actually would be a criminal charge. Um, chapter 270, section 16 is, is basically illegal dumping or littering type charges. And a penalty for that is a $5,500 fine, uh, $5,500 and a license suspension, actually. Why that part is written into law, I'm not 100% sure. My guess is, is that generally speaking, it covers littering. And if you throw something out your car window, you can that can happen. But 
Um, yeah, fifty five hundred dollars. So it sounds like the two fifty um, is accurate. The DPW certainly is allowed, basically under those fines and fees conditions, to issue um, fees which are which accurately represent the work that had to be done to 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 remove the um, the items. Um, Chris did his due diligence and covered that, um, but yeah, it sounds like a bargain to me. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so Mr. Shattuck is here. Um, I guess my question for you, Mr. Shattuck, is uh, so you live in South Hadley. I guess, how, how did you arrive at the Hadley DPW with a truckload of junk? Well, let me just, let me just first say that this was not a truck full of junk. It was simply grass clippings from a quarter acre building lot that my mother and that has we, where we live in South Hadley. So it was, it was simply grass clippings, nothing else mixed in. And this, this was put in the compost pile that's located in the rear of the town yard. And I had been, I had been to um, properties down there. I knew about the town yard. I knew that you collected uh, compost, that you had a compost pile there. There was no, there was no bad intentions in what I was doing that day. I was simply trying to free up my trailer. I didn't know what to do with the grass. And I thought, I'll bring it to Hadley. I know they have a compost pile in the back. I'll dump my grass there. And I'll bring these two highway signposts that I have that were at the property for uh, a number of years that were in mint condition. And I figured I'd drop those off at the on the side of the barn where the highway department is where they put all the signs and the posts and everything and i said you know what instead of scrapping these at sullivan's and Hoyoke, i'll just give them to hadley and they can use them for future projects when they need to post the sign out on a road so and i think that's what happened is i drove my vehicle by the garage there and and unloaded the two signposts that I was I was leaving for you, which was you know which has a monetary value to them. They're, I'm sure when the town has to purchase signposts, they're not free. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to leave my grass there in their compost pile, not out on the side of the road. I'm not dumping anything but grass, and I'll donate these two signposts to them, and I'll put them right where they belong on the side of the barn where the highway department puts all their sign. And then I drove away and, and there was no bad intentions about this whatsoever. Um, I know it was wrong. It was a bad decision because you know, the, the yard wasn't even open at that time. Uh, and, and I apologize for my bad decision there, but no bad intentions. There was, it wasn't a dump load of garbage or construction or, or dirt, whatever else was in that, that pile in the back. That's somebody else's. That's not mine. I only left grass clippings and it was only from a half acre building lot. I'm just asking my mother and I, we live together in South Hadley and we're under a very tight budget. And this $250 fee would certainly be a hardship. And that's why I, I went through the, the, the effort of putting a, a, a professional, you know, a letter together that showed my intentions and, and my sincere apology for this. But you're never going to see me again. <laughs> and, and as far as when this this started uh, tonight on the phone about my incident, I, I would never do anything to uh, in a cemetery or, or I'm not involved in any of that. That was mentioned in the beginning. Why you put the cameras in the in the town yard to try to catch someone? <laughs> that is definitely not me. You know. So I, I had asked. no bad intentions. I just had no bad intentions about this. I know it was a bad decision, but I but I dumped them in a in a compost pile, not out on a school playground or in the woods somewhere. Amy, Did you try to contact the DPW at all to say that you were leaving these for our town or anything, or just let anybody know that that's what your intentions no, really, were? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. And it really happened so quickly. It happened so quickly. I loaded my trailer with these grass clippings. And then later on in the evening, I needed the trailer for someone else that wanted to use it 
from me. And it was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? I can't just leave these grass clippings on the trailer. And that was where I, I made a rash decision. But it certainly I tried to do it the best way I could by by leaving them in a compost pile. Not so just you like drove I said, not 20 just to 25 out minutes somewhere and to contact anybody that you were doing this. No, it was actually a Sunday. I didn't think I would be able to reach anyone at that point. Leave a message. And in South Hadley, I would have brought them to South Hadley, but you know, South Hadley's got a, a fence around it. You can't even get in at night or during a, an off day. I, I knew that it was fenced in. I said, well, I can't bring it to South Hadley. That's definitely not going to happen. What I should have done, what I should have done is just dumped them on a tarp in the yard and waited for the dump at South Hadley to open. But I kind of just, it was a split, split moment. And I decided that uh, I knew I could drive into the Hadley yard uh, if, and put them in a compost pile in the back. And I don't understand what, what, happens to the grass clippings after that what you guys do with them how so did, that was how did you know that hadley had this if you're from south hadley and a question for mr okafer were the posts he left of any use to the dpw uh, well let me i'll answer your first question um i had been to hadley with a welding company that i do some work with and we fixed the, uh, we welded and, and repaired the uh, brush hog that's connected to the front of the backhoe that you guys would use to clear all the branches that are better growing over the guardrail into the street. And we were there and I noticed, I, I noticed that the place was wide open and there was no fence around it. That That's simply the only uh way that I knew that I'd be able to drive. And I knew you had a compost pile in the back. Yeah, so I figured that was a good, it was a good place to put it. You never dumped on that compost pile before? Because the compost pile was open for years actually on the farmer's piece of property. So we still have a lot of people that come in that think the compost pile is still active and it's not anymore. They ground it all up and you know, no, sir. This was this, sir, sir. This was my only time entering the property to leave grass clippings. I'd never been in there before. Chris, the signposts. Uh, someone had uh, was it Jane had asked. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, he, the sign he left is not useful to the town of Hadley. Also, he, um, as he said, he left his trust is also part of. Um, Part of um, illegal dumping because we he he didn't call us to even ask us if he left a sign if the sign is useful to us or if it's something that the town will be interested in. So so to can use, I? I'm sorry. No, oh, sorry. You can continue if you weren't finished. So, uh, so he's trying to use this to justify his Ill illegal dumping. Uh, that was and he, he he left it somewhere where we have poles, some of the poles where he, he left them are uh, poles that- I left two, I left two. That, some of the location- They were in mint, mint condition. So I- how can, how can you say, sir, that they're not useful? They're not useful because they, you left them where outside, where we have uh, other poles that we have taken out of the road. We're not using them. They are all, so they are, they are basically uh, scrap metal. And you also left them where we, you don't expect them to come in. We don't know that you left two posts for us. All right, so uh, let's... Because you're a Samaritan and we're looking for two. So, sir, what you've done, I don't think you should use the poll as excuse. Rather, you are speaking to the select board. If you want, if, you are, if you're looking for leniency, you don't have to show justification. And the 250, in my, my view, is just like the police chief said, you got a good bag in. Right, so, so I just want to. I'm ask not sure. I'm not sure when I when I met with, when uh, I Mr. met with Shattuck, you, when, Mr. Shattuck, yes, Mr. Shattuck. Okay, <clears throat> hold on. Uh, Amy, All right. go ahead. So the reason that police give speeding tickets is because someone's done something wrong, and hopefully it'll present it'll prevent an accident in the future. The reason that we're giving you a fine 
is because you've done something wrong and hopefully you think about it in the future, doing this to your own town or someone else's. So I'm sorry, but I'm gonna move that we continue on with the $250 bargain that we're doing. So I'm sorry, but. All right, well, we it seems it seems like you're it on. actually Mr. Shattuck, okay. No, it's not your turn. Um, Amy, motion to uh, keep the two hundred fifty dollars fine. A second. Second by Jane. Any other discussion from the board, or any further questions for Mr. Shattuck or Chris or Chief Mason? Mr. Chairman, I will. Uh, I will, uh, if it's possible. Uh, apart from the two fifty, I also recommend that. Uh, uh, Mr. Shadik, do not be seen at DPW outside the official work hours. Okay, uh, Chief Mason. Chief Mason. That sounds like a uh, no trespass request from Chris. Is that something that could be done? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, we can send him one of our internal forms. Uh, but technically, Chris has just done so. Uh, he, you're allowed. He can do it verbally. Okay. Perfect. All right, any other discussion on this? I mean, if this is a first time offense, I'm, I don't know if that's a little bit egregious or not, but I'm still good with the fine, um, which is I think the motion on the table. But if you personally, I don't think you need our approval, Chris, to do what you just did. So um, that's completely, completely up to you but that I just want to put on the record that that's separate from what we're voting on right now. I'd like to, I'd like to make an amendment that we reduce that to 150. I think um, the gentleman uh, has said that it was a grievance error on his part. He has admitted to it um, and in imposing this leniency or him not being able to trespass on the property again i think you know we need to be more vigilant i'm sure there's more people that you actually go down there and do these kind of things i know he's from south hadley but um i would like to reduce that to 150 dollars um and i you know maybe you know even if we take the metal and put it for scrap or whatever that's some money in our pocket for those posts that he left um but i think because it was his first offense and I feel like we should probably be a little lenient at this point, certainly uh, a lesson to be learned and a lesson for other people to uh, take heed to that we are not open to, you know, dumping. Um, but again, I'd like to show just some type of lenience for this person. Amy, do you accept that amendment? Um, I won't because I think that we had costs of involved with this with the DPW and we're already on a tight budget and I think it's lenient if we compare it to the littering fine that Chief Mason talked about. All right well it's Amy's motion so I just want to I'll check to see if that's uh well I don't want to get into a pissing contest about this this is uh you know was it cost for laborers for two hours it's already at the compost pile um, and again, he did leave the post. It, we probably can get scrap metal for it. Um, I, I just feel like, you know, uh, it, it was an error and a rash judgment on this person's part. Um, and I just feel like we should probably um, cut some slack and the next time it certainly wouldn't be, it would be a more of a fine than 250. Right, so, what we have right now is the, the motion. <laughs> The 250 and then Joyce is asking to reduce it. So Amy, are you keeping your motion or changing it? I I would I'm like to keep it. Towards Joyce's reduction in it. And if you're gonna trespass him anyway, then he's not coming back either way and he admitted to it. All right, so let's vote on Amy's motion. So she said she wanted to keep it. She had a second. Um, so let's vote on keeping the $250 fine. If that doesn't work, then we'll talk about the 150. So uh, Jennifer. Roll call that Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chunglu? No. Muscavitz? No. Parsons? Yes. Sorry, I end up being a swing vote a lot. Last person voting. <laughs> That's, thank you. That's 3 2. All right. So, Mr. Shattuck, um, please take care of that with uh, 
I guess it would be the DPW or the collector's office. And um, But thank you for being here and owning it. Like some people wouldn't do that. So I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, again, you know, I'm, I'm not a litter bug. In fact, this this many times where I stop on the side of the road, if I see styrofoam and pick it up and bring it to the landfill in South Adley, because I know what a mess that makes into the environment. So um, I just want to say is it was grass clippings in a small amount and it was in a compost pile at a town yard. I didn't create a, it, it just, there was no bad intentions there. It was a mistake, and I agree, and I apologize, and you're not going to see me in there doing that ever again, but but that's all it was. It wasn't anything more than that. It's not littering or right, well, uh, damage. We need, to, we, we need to wrap it up, sir, but I appreciate you showing up, and I uh, appreciate the apology, and we'll uh, um, wish you a, a good night. All right, but is that is it still at 250, or did they agree on the 150? 250. 250. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, Chief, I think that you didn't have anything else, did you? Oh, okay. You said no. All right. So then uh, we'll jump back up to public comments 3.1. Uh, public comments are 15 minutes. Uh, limit your comments to three minutes per person so that other people may have the opportunity to speak. If you are here for public comments, if you want to turn on your camera, wave at us so that way we know that you're here. iPhone raise their hand, but they do not need to identify themselves. Okay. Who is iPhone? You, you may speak. Someone's on an iPhone that's unmuted. If you're here for public comments, now's your chance. Yeah, can you can you hear me? I'm sorry, uh, I can't rename. Who is this? Hey, this is uh, Mark Britton, uh, property owner over at uh, 93 Cemetery Road. Okay, go ahead with your public comments. You got three minutes. Hey, good evening. Hey, I was just um, calling. So we had a uh, just uh, commenting. So we had a uh, we've had a lot of rain and we had a really a decent high water event where the um, the river came up pretty high and I just wanted to address select board. Um, I think it was a great idea to go through the permitting process for uh, the fire chief and the building inspector to be able to get a hold of people in case of emergency. I did see, um, I witnessed some docks floating down the river. I saw a lot of erosion. I, Luckily, it didn't get high enough to affect any campers. And I think a lot of the people out on the river were very respectable with this high water event. We saw a lot of boats getting pulled, uh, including at all the local marinas, even uh, out of town. But I just wanted to share that with the select board and just give you an update of what's going on with the river and uh, the camping situation. My other thing too, is I'd like to just mention that I went in front of the ZBA uh, last week and I lost my hearing for trying to get a zoning variance. I, I was quite upset over the the vote because there was a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of historic, historically uh, variances given within the 50 feet of the street, which is a, which is a heavy zoning bylaw. You, you got about within 30 feet. seconds left to wrap it up yeah you can't, you can't build within 30 or within 50 feet of the street uh and i was looking for a variance on a camper and it got shot down by a two to one vote i thought it was very odd and peculiar that the conservation the former conservation chair um was actually there and she was actually pretty much trying to halt the uh the whole uh process and uh I know historically conservation has never been on a ZBA meeting to um, to speak uh, in different of, of a residence. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you for the comment. Uh, anybody else here for public comments? Randy, is your, your camera's on. Are you here for public? Yes, I am. All right, go ahead. 
I want to comment on the uh, dismissal of Paulette Kuzdeba. I have talked to several of you via per, in person, via email with my wife. Uh, we believe that you did the town a huge, you the board, did the town a huge disservice by not reappointing her, particularly in the fashion that it was done. Uh, there was, it was all one-sided and it is my opinion that the board ought to vote to somehow either reinstate her or discuss the process that you took to uninstate her because I just think that was terrible. Every one of you, myself included, has a job or more than one job and we all make mistakes. And I'm not saying that Paulette did because we really don't know what happened there. But assuming she did something incorrect, do you, do any of you want to say, get told by your employer, uh, I don't like what you did. We're not going to talk about it, but you're fired. Uh, and so that being said, I would appreciate some reconsideration of the vote that was taken. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Randy. Anyone else for public comments? It looks like Rob Baranowski has his hand raised as well. For whatever reason, it's not showing up on mine. So I'll, I'll have you watch for hands, Jennifer. <laughs> uh, Rob Baranowski, go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I'm also calling um, and want comments about the conservation um, committee and the uh, action that happened. I think the board did a wonderful job. Um, I was at the, that ZBA meeting that Mark Britton talked about. Uh, as everybody knows, the last select board, Mark Britton was the really the only one to speak against um, conservation and Paulette uh, during that meeting. And the very subsequent meeting, the ZBA meeting, when Mark Britton was going for a variance, Paulette decided to show up to that meeting and basically help shoot it down, torpedo it. Um, she may have had valid points. She may have had the right legal terminology, but she has never shown up as a commissioner or as a um, private citizen to one of those ZBAs before. And I think this was really vindictive of her to do this, uh, especially since just a couple of days before Mark Britton had spoken against her. So I'm just happy um, with the decision that the select board made and the town doesn't need this type of vindictive politics. Okay, thank you for the comment. Anybody else for public comments? Um, I just had like a minor thing to say and I'm not sure if this is like the appropriate place or time to say it. Um, yeah, you, can, you can make public comments too. <laughs> you're, you're a public I wasn't, person. I wasn't sure. Um, so I think that at the last meeting, um, I made a comment and I said the two words, Team Hadley, and that has blown up like wildfire on both sides, whether I'm receiving praise or I'm receiving dissent for that. And so I really just wanted to take a moment to explain myself a little bit further because um, I believe what was written in the newspaper wasn't an accurate representation of what I meant by that. Um, which doesn't surprise me, but um, what I mean when I talk about myself being part of Team Hadley isn't just that I'm, oh, I'm from Hadley and I'm an original and I'm so important. My mentality about Team Hadley and being part of it is a couple things. One, I do not have children, um, so they're not in the school system. Um, I don't have a special interest group that I'm a part of. I don't have anything that I'm working on that I'm championing or trying to push. So that means I don't call select board members or townspeople looking for support in doing public comments. I don't use town mailing lists to send things out to people asking for support. So what I mean is I'm an objective individual on the outside coming in. Yes, I was born and raised here. Yes, I went through the school system here, but I don't have anything that's biasing my opinions um, 
and I don't ask people for favors and I don't ask people to do things for me for this board um, and my position on it. So that's kind of what I meant is when I think of Team Hadley, it's I have 6,000 people in my mind, not four or five people or a committee or something else that I'm looking to champion in any decision that I make. So that's kind of, I wanted to clear the air with that because I felt like it wasn't accurately portrayed. And I wanted to explain myself a little bit more on that for people on both sides, whether they're giving me praise or you know, giving me negative feedback, which I appreciate both because it's only gonna help us get better. So that's really all I had to say. Okay, thank you. Anybody else for public comments? We got a couple more minutes. Last call, Jennifer, any hands that are raised? I, I don't, I can't see them still. I don't see, I don't see anyone else. All right, thank you. All right, so we will move on to next on the agenda. We have uh, Tim, I believe is here with his sidekick Gary sharing the same Zoom connection. Uh, we have 4.1, the Goodwin Renovation Update Municipal Building Committee. So uh, Tim, Gary, do you wanna tell us uh, what you got going on and what's the update? You're on mute, by the way. Hey, can I can I just kick in here to tell these guys that I'm supposed to be on the Municipal Building Committee, and I didn't know that there was a meeting that had taken place. So, uh, could you please try to send me a, a text or an email uh, saying when you're going to have your meeting so I could join you? So, uh, yes, yeah, certainly we will. We actually have not had a meeting because we've had very di difficult time on getting. Yeah. Uh, the committee together, but certainly we will send it out to everybody that we're having a committee. But I first, first off want to say thanks for having us on. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Unfortunately, you know, us uh, circumstances have delayed it and certainly none of us wanted it delayed, but it's all good right now. Um, we were slow getting things uh, started. Uh, we were very concerned about getting funding for Larry Tuttle, who is our architectural uh, person. And uh, that has been remedied, which is a good thing. Then we had issues with the footprint for phase two, which is the addition off the back. That was very concerning. And we really did not want to go forward too far if there was serious issues with the footprint that we had to work with. Luckily, uh, bringing Larry on board, having him look at it, reviewing his old drawings, uh, we were able to reduce the size, change it slightly, and keep what we needed to do with regard to phase two or the addition. The addition is strictly to add, uh, handicapped bathrooms, a good safe set of stairs and an elevator. And he was able to um, get everything in the uh, addition. We did not, we were hoping that that would happen only because we didn't want things to uh, jeopardize the historical nature of the existing building. So where are we right now? Uh, we've had Larry go on in with some of his experts to review what's there. Uh, luckily, we've got some really good um, feedback from the uh, mechanical designer and the plumbers with regard to uh, what we want to do. So what is that uh, plan? Uh, certainly, we want to use the first floor for, for meeting space. In order to do that we, for this time, until we get the addition on, we were uh, thinking about putting in a temporary bathroom in the back area right next to the steps that would not jeopardize any of the historical features of the interior of the building that luckily the when the, they looked at it and they said that that was um, very viable without disrupting too much of the structure itself the mechanical portion with regard to heating and ventilation they also said that uh, by utilizing what's there, so we don't have to replace what's there with the heating system, 
we can add mini splits uh, to help out with air conditioning and everything else. And they felt that that was going to work out very well. Certainly our biggest issue has been and always will be the electrical. We do have a very outdated and uh, non-code compliant uh, we have knob and tube in the building that's actually still uh, uh, being utilized, which is really a hazard at this point. Uh, but the circuit breaker, the, the uh, panel is very undersized. All that can be replaced. We've, we've got that in the works and uh, uh, it'll, it'll correspond at the same time that we take down the ceiling on the first floor, get all the new wiring in and get all that. The first phase is going to be primarily getting a temporary bathroom, getting code compliant electrical. And that's basically a, 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 the majority of the electrical bill will be replaced. Um, so it looks good uh, as far as getting the uh, bid specs out. Uh, Larry has indicated that he certainly is uh, pushing for the first part and, and most likely it's going to be mid-September that we get the first draft. We certainly will be reviewing that with Carolyn and the hopes is that we'll have something to get out by the end of the month or at, at the very latest at the beginning of October so we can get the first phase going and, and the hopes is that we'll have that uh, started right away and uh, get that done so we can get into um, second phase. So the Tim. big thing though we need answers and is has the trustees handed the building over? Because technically we really can't start this process uh, the, the, the work unless we have the building in hand. Carolyn, I know you've been working on it. Yeah, I've been working with the town council over that. And um, te technically, I know that there was a, a letter or um, something provided. I met with the library um, trustees last week. Something was given to the town. But it really should, according to town council, that's going to need to go to town meeting to officially hand over the custody of the building because the will is the deed is actually um, under the trustees. So I will follow up, Tim, whether any of that can proceed before town meeting. So I'll have to get that information for you. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to town council about that. So I got a couple questions for you, Tim. Um, sure. So first phase would be a temporary bathroom and bringing the elect electrical up to code, right? Correct. And do we have any ballpark idea of what we're looking at? Because I assume we're going to have to have a town meeting uh, article article for both handing over the building and then for, to finance this uh, somehow. We have the financing already. Oh, we do. Okay. All well, right. Provided it doesn't go over that. I mean, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know how building stuff is right now. Right. So the hope is that we have enough money. If, if it does go over, the thought is phase one also included putting in the foundation for the addition. If we really go over, I, I think we're going to recommend that we pull that and just concentrate on the inside of the building, get what we need done, done, and you know, come back uh, with with a slight increase to include the foundation for phase two. The hope is we don't have to do that, but that is our alternative option, so we can keep this thing rolling and finished up. How, how much money was approved by town meeting? I don't remember. Like 265 or yeah, something like 265. that, I believe. And unfortunately, we had to take some of that, some of that money out to pay um, uh, Larry Tuttle because we didn't have any more funding on that. But I think we're, and Larry feels that we're pretty much safe based on uh, what he's, he's seen in the field. So yes, electrical, electrical wires doubled like everything else, but the hope is we'll still be there, but we have that contingency plan to keep this thing moving, moving forward and get it done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have to. Anyway. We have to forward, and this is a good uh, 
good thing that we're doing. So thank you, you guys. And uh, let's, let's get back on track, right? Yeah, we need to get back on track. We have, to, and I think we're right now we're, um, we're going to be, have a little bit with vacations, but you know, when we get into uh, September and everything, you're going to see us uh, meeting a lot more and get things back on uh, to a better, okay. better schedule. For Sounds good. All right. Any other questions? Any other time when we're going to meet again or think about meeting? Or are we going to kind of wait till September or August? What do you want to well, do? Um, vacations are a problem right now. I think uh, we're going to try to push for mid-September for our next meeting. Um, I, 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 have, I, I myself have a small window in, in September that I'm back here. So um, we'll know more when Larry gets, uh, gets yeah. his figures and stuff. And then us. we'll all meet together and have, invite you, and maybe we'll have a, a joint meeting then at the time we go through everything. Okay. okay. All yep. right. Good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else have anything for uh, Tim or Gary before we go? No. no? All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. All right, we'll go down to uh, 4.2 Housing and Economic Development Committee update. I think Molly's here for that. And I apologize if somebody else is, but I know Molly's on the committee. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, thanks, David. So thanks to the board for taking time. I'm just looking at the attendee list. I think Bill Dwyer may be the only other committee member on tonight as well. Um, so um, the reason that. We asked for time um, with you is just to make sure we recognize that we're a subcommittee um, that was formed by the select board. And we think it's appropriate that, you know, if we're having meetings and we're discussing various topics that we should keep you not only apprised of that, but also try to get some feedback from you periodically to make sure we're not, um, you know, perhaps going down a, a path that you don't want us to. So um, as you know, uh, much of last year, uh, we didn't meet frequently, but most of our meetings were pretty much dedicated to that COVID relief fund. Um, so again, thanks to town meeting for their support there. Um, so with that behind us at the past couple of meetings, we tried to turn our attention to uh, thinking about what we might be able to do that would be beneficial for the town. So there are two particular topics we just wanted to run by you tonight. Um, the first one is the idea of proceeding with a housing production plan. Um, ho housing production plan is something that is actually um, defined very clearly by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the idea behind developing a housing production plan, um, which is a logical extension of an implementation really of our master plan, is that if we are able to get grant funding um, I want to be very clear there, we're looking for grant funding, work with uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission or some other resource to create this production plan. Um, what it does is it puts us in a much better position for possible grant opportunities down the road for any sort of housing endeavors that we might um, get into. So it's really kind of a checking off the a checkbox to say, yes, we've done that. Um, what a housing production plan does is you bring in a consultant, again, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, we found out is currently working on one of these for, I believe, Southampton and um, perhaps South Hadley, is it's all data driven. So they, you know, they collect data about um, need in our area, and then they take a look at what we might have to offer. Um, there is very much an affordability component to this, but it's not strictly limited to affordable housing. So that's, I think, something that um, there's been a little bit of confusion about. What they're really trying to do is address the housing need in the area and then help us kind of move forward thinking about that in our planning, which would go through all the normal channels, right? So whether a developer came in or the planning board wants to talk about zoning changes, but um, it, again, the idea of creating this housing production plan would be to do further analysis and data gathering. So it's not presupposing any outcome, quite frankly. Um, so this was run by the planning board last night 
because obviously the planning board has a vested interest in this type of thing. And they voted uh, three to two in favor of us moving forward with seeking grant funding for a housing production plan. And they knew at that time, the next step was that we would be coming in front of you tonight as well. Um, so that's the first topic. And I wanna pause there for any comments or questions before we go on to the second topic. I have one. I'm private uh, municipal uh, funding or is this just private or just municipal or how does it work? Um, what we learned last night at the planning board meeting and, and certainly Bill, if you wanna jump in here, feel free. Um, at their meeting, uh, Ken Cormier from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission was there. So they specifically asked him how these other two uh, neighboring towns were going about it. I guess Southampton's not neighboring, but you know, close enough. Um, they both received uh, direct technical assistance grants from the state as part of their normal annual request when you go out to DLTA and say, hey, we've got this project. Is there anything that you might be able to do to help us fund that? There are some other funding resources from the state, um, but I believe the deadline passed this year and, and this is part of the governor's initiative, John, for, you know, about housing statewide being an issue. So the Commonwealth is also offering another grant opportunity, but the grant applications uh, we were told closed at the beginning of June, but there might be another bite at the apple um, if more funds are released later on. Yeah, I've been, so that's, I've been that's watching, where the funding would come. I've been watching on the news, a lot of this affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of talk about that in the state also. So mm -hmm. I don't know part of that also? Um, well, I, I think there's, again, there's definitely a component, but there, and I'm just reading actually off of the, the website here, it, it talks about a vision for future affordable housing and market rate housing. So I think this has been a topic, you know, amongst many people in town that there's a very official definition of affordable housing, right? I mean, we all know what that means, and we know that Hadley's over that 10% requirement, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're also looking at is the affordability of housing for all. So people who may not fit the affordable housing criteria per se still may be of modest income means. And there's, I mean, we all know there's no inventory in Hadley for graduate students, um, you know, our, our own children to be able to buy an entry level home in town. Uh, people who may be working multiple jobs trying to make ends meet and they're just over that low income limit. So it, I think the idea is that a housing production plan would really help us identify what all of those needs are. And rather than leave it to anecdotal evidence, we would have hard data behind it to help our planning board, select board and, and other town leadership move forward. So Molly, I have a, I admittedly don't know much about this. So my question is, let's just say we do a study and obviously we, you know, have a affordability issue. So let's just say the study comes back and says, oh, hey, we need affordable housing. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, so would affordable housing be incentivized by grant money or would other types of housing be uh, disincentivized? I don't know, de-incentivized or mm -hmm. how, I guess, what's the path forward once we do the study? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, like like many studies, the path forward could be we say thank you very much and we put it on a shelf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the other path forward is that it's something else so that, I mean, right now, as, as you know, we're over the affordable housing requirement of that 10%. Um, but you also know that over the next several years, we're well aware of the fact that some of that countable inventory is going to drop off. Um, my understanding, and I believe Bill Dwyer made this statement, so again, Bill, jump in if I say the wrong thing here, but by having in a housing production plan, that's also something else that helps you kind of stave off in, uh, a forced 40B plan. You know, what, what it's doing is it's positioning us to show that we're doing all of the right things. So exactly, I think the point is it, it's <clears throat> at this stage, we're talking about doing a study that would rely on grant funds with no net cost to the community. Uh, and the 
initial benefit of it is it shows we're doing something. Um, a lot of a lot of studies do get uh, left on the shelf. So we did the long range plan. We did the long range plan update, which has a housing chapter in it. And um, I think this is an effort to gather more information. Um, I'm not aware that in any way we are compelled to do anything. Uh, we may just get a recommendation that if you want more affordable housing, you should consider zoning for apartments. Whether we would zone for apartments would be completely up to town meeting. It wouldn't be a self-implementing plan. Um, if we have the plan, we are presumably more eligible than we would be otherwise for grants that are out there for, towards implementation. Uh, there are a lot of ifs here, um, but uh, for me, the, at the moment, the upside is there's no, will, will be no direct cost. And I just am not seeing a downside to gathering more information. Yeah, let's find out what we can find out, especially if it's with grant funds, why not? So does that mean that somewhere down the line, could there possibly be a change in um, how we allow people to put uh, change the the uh, configuration of somebody's property if they wanted to add a house to their property doing low income or you know how they um, have like a congregate type of housing area is that something that would fall into that or would that not well it might come out of it as a recommendation for something to explore yeah but um, again, it won't make it happen. Uh, you know, at the moment, uh, we are zoned primarily for single family dwellings. Yeah. Uh, with a few exceptions for multifamilies, a few exceptions for accessory apartments, and the big uh, exception for senior housing. And obviously, the senior housing development that we have on East Street is entirely unlike any other dwellings we have or dwelling communities we have in Hadley. It's a condo. Um, it's not spaced. It doesn't have side yard spacing, doesn't have front yard spacing. Um, that's something that's one of many options. Uh, another option is to have uh, detached accessory apartments at present Accessory apartments have to be part of the primary dwelling. I mean, there's, a, there's a world of options out there. Um, none of them, or all of them, will depend in part on what the town wants to do. Um, as we reach, you know, as, as a different demographic come, starts coming to town meeting, there may be more interest in smaller lots, cluster zoning, um, that's the word I wanted. Thank you. Cluster yeah. zoning. The, yeah. the, the last time that was addressed, it came out of the long range plan implementation committee, probably about 10 years ago. Yeah. And it wasn't completely vetted at the time and it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, again, these are, there is a large variety of housing options out there uh in the state as a whole and we do not um we do not reflect all of the options here in hadley um whether we would want to explore adopting some options that we don't have well we sort of don't know what the what we don't know what's out there uh so that's part of what the housing production plan would look at you know what, what we have and where we could go including what we could do with adopting something different. But mm -hmm. bear in mind, it doesn't make it happen. It doesn't make it so. Yeah. What, what is the actual, um, if you can just refresh my mind, it's getting old, Bill. Um, um, what um, the actual size of a lot would be, it's a 50-foot setback, 
correct? Well, we're the minimum lot size under current zoning is uh, 30 square thousand square feet in the 30,000 square feet, except in the aquifer protection district where it is 40,000 square feet. <clears throat> in addition, we currently require uh, at least 175 feet of frontage. Okay. Um, 50 foot front yard setback, 40 foot backyard setback, 15 foot side yard setback. Okay. So that creates, that still leaves, I just had to do this analysis for, for someone who wanted to buy a lot. That leaves a fairly big, fairly large building envelope. Yeah. You can put in a seven or 8,000 square foot footprint of a house in there. Yeah. So yeah. You, can put a, you can put a big house on the lots we have. Yeah. Um, and the, the economics are such that uh, there's more bang for the buck. I've had this conversation with developers, with builders, uh, and no one really wants to build uh, a three-bedroom, two-bath two uh, ranches. Yeah. Uh, the money is in building a five-bedroom, two-story, with a three- or four-car garage. Yeah. <laughs> They're not thinking of retirement, are they, Bill? <laughs> no, they're not downsizing. No, they are not. Oh, my God. Okay. Hey, Bill, are you guys still inquiring about uh, furthering out the dates on some of the properties that we have for the affordable housing? I, I know we spoke about uh, <clears throat> Greenleafs and Campus Plaza at one time. It, it, it's on our it's on our radar. Okay. Um, I know that we did uh, have a meeting, a joint meeting with the uh, planning board and select board before everything went sideways. And I believe yeah. we tasked David Nixon with uh, looking into this. And uh, I bet that he uh, passed that along to Carolyn, but it's probably at the back of his notebook. So. Yeah. Uh, as uh, we, we'll uh, we're keeping an eye on it, and we'll uh, we do want to discuss that with uh, with Carolyn at some point. Yeah. So, do you need anything from us, Molly or Bill, as far as or just go forward and see if you can get some grant money? Yeah, I think we just wanted to make sure that you're comfortable with that, and I guess the next step would be to work with Carolyn um, to talk about those possibilities. At, at some point in the future, there will need to be a vote to apply for a grant, but um, we're just talking at this point. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you thanks. So um, then the second topic um, is we wanted to talk about exploring, um, recognizing that we still would need to meet with uh, the CPA committee, but uh, let me backtrack. So right now we have two buckets or pools of funds that are available to use towards some sort of affordable, actual affordable housing. So most recently, we're all aware of the fact that the affordable housing trust was actually approved at town meeting. And currently we have an affordable housing trust um, group of trustees that I believe are comprised of the full planning board and two representatives from select board. Uh, Dave, one representative and one former, David and Christian. And Christian, okay. Um, so that's that pool of money. And right now the only funding that's in that pool is the money that came from the East Street Commons um, Barry Roberts project. And that was... Um, just going to round somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 or so. Additionally, the CPA funds, as you know, has multiple buckets within it. And the CPA fund has a housing component. Up until this time, the CPA committee has never had any sort of affordable housing project um, or use brought to them or discussed by them so that any of those funds would be expended. Again, I'm, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but for the sake of argument, that's another 275 or 300,000 or so. So 
one of the things that we became aware of is that the law allows for municipalities to merge those funds or have the CPA transfer the only the housing component of what's currently under their purview into the affordable housing trust fund to then fall under the purview of the affordable housing trust fund trustees. So that's something um, that we've been talking about on the committee and I, and I will just quickly read to you kind of what we came up with for pros and cons for discussion points. Um, in our minds, the pros of doing that is that it might provide clarity on the source of funds that could be allocated towards affordable housing initiatives in the future. So again, we're just one bucket of money. The fact that housing itself is a very complex area and having only one board with planning expertise on it dedicated is important for successful ventures. So rather than asking our, our highly competent and well-trained CPA committee to not only deal with you know, historic preservation and all of that, and then have this housing component be a one-off that they have to get their heads wrapped around, uh, maybe having that expertise on housing in one place is a good idea. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund trustees are actually able to meet more frequently than the current CPA does. So that means that projects might be vetted more quickly. Um, so this is, a, this, this is a loaded one. Town meeting approval would not be required for disbursement of those funds. And I'm gonna come back to that. So in a way that could be a, a pro, right? If we wanted to do something in a hurry. Um, it eases the technical knowledge requirements for the CPA, which I think I already mentioned. Um, it expedites the use of that CPA housing set aside that is yet to be distributed. And there are potentially fewer constraints on how it could be used because CPA rules come with a few more strings than the Affordable Housing Trust Fund rules. The downside that we came up with that people might not be happy about is that the CPA committee itself might be displeased because they would no longer be in control of, of that portion of the CPA tax. Um, any perception that we were trying to do something purposely to circumvent town meeting um, might be a worry. And the fact that it's changed. I mean, it's just different from what we've been doing. So we're not asking for the select board to approve it. Um, I mean, you wouldn't be able to anyway. I, I will tell you that if you want to watch the planning board meeting last night, um, this topic came up about one hour into their meeting. Um, and there was a very robust discussion with no conclusion. I believe it was continued until their next planning board meeting. Um, but what we're asking from the select board is, again, just support to continue the conversation, recognizing that ultimately the CPA committee itself is probably going to have the loudest voice on this. Now, Amy Fiden is on our committee. Um, she's in agreement. She um, thinks it's a good idea to move it forward for discussion with the CPA committee. So the, the reason we're bringing it to you tonight is more one of timing. As we mentioned, the CPA committee really only meets proximate to the annual and the fall town meeting. So if we want to have this discussion with them at all and get their feedback, we need to get on their September agenda. So we're asking your permission tonight to move forward in that regard. Is any, um, the makeup of the Affordable Trust trustees, does that have any, I know it has all the um, building committee on it at the moment. Is there any room if you should merge funds to change some of the, um, I don't mean building committee, I mean planning board, uh, change a few of the planning board members out and put a few CPA members on it. So in a sense, they would still have a say in what's going on. Uh, that's very doable. The, uh, <clears throat> the statutory requirements uh, are that we must have a select board member and I think we must have a planning board member. Otherwise, it's open. And I forget off the top of my head how many we can have. We, um, as a planning board, volunteered for it uh, when it was first adopted because uh, we have the most expertise in affordable housing issues, but there's no reason others couldn't develop some expertise. And it's, you know, as Mike Sarzinski said, I have expertise. I've been to a couple of trainings. Well, that's two more trainings than 
the CPA committee has been to on affordable housing issues. So uh, we've been talking about it for a while. Uh, we, we have a familiarity with it, but um, we don't have a possess, uh, possessive interest in being the sole trustees. We just thought it would be, that would be a good way to package this going forward so that we'd hit the ground with some momentum. But there's no reason why we cannot bring others on board. And it could be CPA. It could be uh, people from the people who are in, who are receiving affordable housing subsidies. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that we haven't really advertised this one much because it's fairly new and we want to get some, uh, just want to, uh, absorb everything that's going on, but there definitely is room to add people or substitute people. Thank you. Do you need a vote from us tonight or just to go ahead and pursue it with CPA or what do we need to do? Yeah, I think, I think tonight was more of a, you know, unless you have any strong objection, obviously if you objected to us going down this path, we would want to stop, you know, not waste any time, but if you're amenable to us, at least, finding out what CPA thinks about it, then that, that would be great. Any uh, select board members have any objection? No, I don't. No, I'm all for it. It's a great forward with, and I support it wholeheartedly. Uh, would, would you substitute a couple of the uh, planning board members for a couple of the CPA members? Or? We could, uh, well, if, after we talk to them about it, if, they, if, that, if that is something that would make it more palatable all or all around that's yeah that's something we definitely would discuss um i forget offhand i think we're we're we are appointed by the select board to it may be a three-year term uh i would have to go back to to check but um yeah, I don't, I don't think we did a staggered appointment, at, so everyone's going to sort of expire at the same time. Um, and um, at that point, we maybe should do some staggered appointments. But um, uh, yeah, that could definitely be a topic of, of conversation with CPA about whether they would like to have, uh, they would like to have a role. Could you like add them or use them as like a sort of... Um... Um, like cons consultant type thing to it and not necessarily change the number of planning board members. So I think we have seven members of the board of trustee uh, of, of the trustees. Now the five planning board, the two that came from select board. Um, I'm sure not everyone is going to want to continue on, but certainly we could use uh, we we could consult with people if someone wanted to have a bigger role in affordable housing direction, but didn't feel that they could meet on a monthly or every other month basis. Um, I'm sure we could still make a role for them somewhere. Okay. Okay. Well, no objections. So I'd say go forward and yeah. See what you can figure out. Continue the conversation. Hey, yeah. hey Molly, can you uh, send me that link to that uh, mass that you have from planning board, Pioneer Valley planning that you were just referring to? Oh, sure. Yeah, the link that describes the housing production plan. Yeah. 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 I'll send you the link, John. I can, I'll send it to the whole board. In my spare time, I'll read it. <laughs> All right. There'll be a quiz. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll jump down to uh, 6.3 APR co-holder approval for 12 Mount Warner Road. Uh, the town is a co-holder of the APR and approval is needed even in the case of a temporary agricultural structure such as this. Uh, and what they're trying to do is put in a uh, high tunnel, which is basically like a greenhouse, hoop house kind of thing. Um, is anybody here, Jennifer, for this to, t to talk about it or? Jonathan oh. Carr is here. Yep, yep. all right, Jonathan. Welcome. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Jonathan Carr. Uh, I live at 295 River Drive and I own um, the old orchard up on Mount Warner, um, off Mount Warner Road. It used to be Atkins, 
uh, McCretzky way back, Mitchell. Um, in any case, um, it's an APR property and uh, Hadley is a, a co-holder on the deed. Um, and so apparently it's an, it's an older APR and therefore even for very small changes like uh, structures which don't even need a building permit like this type of greenhouse, I, I still need to ask the town for permission. Um, for this kind of thing. So I guess first off, I'm just, I'm asking permission to build this, this high tunnel greenhouse uh, on the, on the farm. Um, and so that's, I guess that's my first question for the select board. Motion to approve. Absolutely. It's not a, it's not a, a concrete stable building that's going to be there. It's a high tunnel that is movable. I have no problems with that. And I, I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second. Yep, we like, we support agriculture and it's, it's nice to see uh, things happening there. So it's great. Great, great, thank you. Um, I just, I, I have one additional question and I don't- Hang on, I don't hang on one second. We just gotta take a roll call vote on that just to make it official. Right. Yeah, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yep. Thank you. All right, go ahead, sir. Right. With other questions. That's all you get. Sorry, just one thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, thanks. I, I was just gonna say, um, you know, like in the future, I don't, I don't know if uh, I could look at a consent agenda for any kind of like structures like this that aren't, you know, even regulated by the town, just to save everybody's time. Um, or alternatively, some towns let the conservation committee handle this APR kind of stuff so it doesn't even have to come before you so just kind of looking to you know uh, make things more streamlined uh, I, I don't know if you guys have any opinions on that I think or, isn't it because the town we, owns that you have to yeah you kind of have to come to us okay um, on, that's, uh, that's just what it is we don't mind okay so we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, sorry to make you sit there for so long I didn't realize you were sitting waiting I would have taken you toward the front so ne next time Oh, no problem. No, it's good to hear what's going on. So, all right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. So y'all do need to make a motion to approve the cold holder agreement, just not to do the, the actual building of the, of the tunnels. You have to agree to sign the cold holder agreement, please. So moved. Thank you. And One second. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. And uh, let's just, I, I don't think there's any discussion on that. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so then uh, we'll move on to water and sewer rate discussion. I think Chris is here for that, and I believe Susan is here. Uh, Chris, do you want to start? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mr. Chairman, we uh, usually at this, um, we, we come before the board to, to take a look at where we are in water and sewer. But uh, because of uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic, we weren't able to come uh, before the board. Uh, but now we are in a new FY, FY22. And uh, we think that uh, it'd be a good idea if the board can take a, take a look again at our rates, especially with sewer. We also have water with all the projects ahead of us. Um, so these are the reasons why I think uh, um, Sue has some numbers that you, you were presenting for the, to the board, but these are the reasons why I think it might be a good idea for the board to take a look. Um, and because from, from my perspective, uh, it'd be a good then for the board to give us uh, some rate increase to, if not, not uh, so that we'll, we'll be able to at least um, in our operating budget or even some capital expenditures, we'll be able to meet some, so that what is coming in is able to at least pay for some services that we have. So Do you have a percentage in mind that you're looking at increasing? I, I will, I will want well, to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sue. Okay, I was going to say, uh, David, I think you had uh, initiated this with Carolyn, 
So I wasn't certain, but um, we need to make sure that operating expenses, which drive rates, um, are are handled appropriately. And um, we, we go uh, ahead, David. What were your thoughts? We did a minor increase on water. Was it two years ago now? Maybe a year ago, something like that. Yep. Um, but yeah, we, like two percent, and we were looking for it on sewer, by the way. But right, yeah, and uh, we haven't done anything with sewer in I believe twelve years now, maybe thirteen. Um, and I, we we did do a, a fifteen percent increase on sewer um, in I believe it was fiscal year nineteen. However, the rate study had indicated that a 43% increase needed to happen. And so, um, you know, we were looking at, at revenues and operating expenses uh, and, and we're still in the negative on sewer and we may come into the negative on water. Um, so it, I, I'm kind of thinking it's time that we get back to at least a, a small, but because nothing had happened from 2007 until 2019 with either. So a small increase, uh, maybe a two and a half percent increase water and sewer um, to help because the revenues are, are just taking the hit to pay for operating expenses, which shouldn't that, happen in, a, if, in an enterprise fund. <laughs> If that's the case, Susan, I am um, wanting to take away that $10 fee that we have put on everybody's bill. Um, if we're going to increase that's water. That's, the $10 fee is for everybody, even but people like me who's not on sewer. Right, I wanna, right. Take, that, I wanna take that away. So let me, let me just finish for a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. I, wanna take, I wanna take away that $10 fee and I want to have us relook and increase the sewer and the water to what we need to do. Uh, I think it's time for an increase in that, even though we've tried to keep the water and sewer down as best we can. We've done that with our taxes, but because we've been a little bit lax in what we have done for water and sewer, I think we have to do some type of increase with that at this point and not just tax everybody for sewer who don't have sewer. People that have sewer uh, don't pay for my septic tank if it goes under. And that's what I'm getting from a no. lot of people. So. No, I, how, I just, can I just, I, I just, it, well, I just don't think it's fair, the, Susan. What yeah. the select board voted was to do yeah. a $10 infrastructure fee. Right. It wasn't going to go all to sewer, all to water. It was going to be determined where the infrastructure needs were by the select board and our commissioners. Correct. So, I mean, if you want to rescind that, that's fine. Um, I, yeah. I, I think I, that you're I going don't to- have like I don't have sewer myself and neither does anyone in my family, but we still use all the stuff on route nine. So that kind of is what it is that was voted on. I'm good with keeping that. Um, I exactly. also would like, I, I, on top of that though, I do something like two and a half percent sewer increase for like, I know that that's not a lot. Um, I was almost thinking, I mean, I don't have sewer myself, so um, I can't really speak as someone that doesn't have it, but if you're looking at an overall town budget, can we do something instead of like, I was thinking almost something like 5%, but can we do two and a half percent next year? And then two and a half percent, like the next year after that. And then it would have been for two years. That would have been exactly what I would have suggested. Okay. I, I was, I was That's thinking exactly two and a half. what I would have suggested. I was I'm good with thinking, that. I was thinking two and a half in increments in six months. In a year time. Well, the problem is, Joyce, 
anything that you vote on in your rate hearing in August, August 18th, is not going to hit water bills until the February billing. Okay. No, are those um, quarterly so, or semi-annually? Um, they're quarterly, but as soon as they read, uh, as soon as they do the readings, we cannot increase the rate for that reading period because it's considered a retroactive uh, retroactive rate increase. Okay. And believe me, the last thing you want to get into is returning premiums or, or returning uh, rate. Uh, Correct. So we, we, have to, we have to do a formal uh, hearing on this, correct? So this is just a preliminary talk here. Uh, we're not making any decisions. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I, I, the reason I wanted to bring this back up is uh, we are moving forward, hopefully, with uh, talks in, with Amherst next month. And so we are looking at other avenues to pursue that may help deal with that sewer enterprise financial situation but all of those are going to be you know we're talking a year at the minimum most likely two or three years by the time everything would get pulled together so you know in the meantime we got to kind of stop the bleeding unfortunately with the uh, the enterprise fund so so i have a question for sue it's my understanding that most towns do a very small increase annually and because we haven't done it that's why we're so far behind yeah well about, it depends about five years ago i had made a motion back when molly and christian were on the board to go up one percent a year and stick to one percent a year so it's not such a big adjustment for the people that are paying the bills and that was over over five years ago i believe four or five yeah. years well, you know, we would be at 5% right now if the board had a hearing and voted on 1% or 1.5% every year and kept to that program, you know. It's just tough to go oh, where you watch for individuals that are on fixed incomes. But they didn't, and so here we are. Um, right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, so when could we have a hearing and then when would those rates go into effect and could we pull together some scenarios of various rates and how much that would generate? And Amy, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, Absolutely. that was all I was saying. I just was kind of wondering the next steps at the moment. So um, I think if you scheduled um, a rate hearing for August 18th, um, that would hit the February bill, um, which isn't going to help, you know, help us for the first part of the year. And we, you know, the revenues were, were smaller due to hotels and restaurants and that type of thing. Um, so, you know, but it's an enterprise fund. You have to, you know, operating expenses drive the rate. So, um, and, and even at two and a half percent for each enterprise fund, I think, I think we can make it work. So, and it's not, it's not a ton, it's not a ton of money, but, um, it will certainly help. David, if I may, uh, I can work with Chris. Chris does have the, and I'm, you've probably seen it before, a tie in bond, um, scenario of where the rate increases should be that we that Hadley hasn't followed. So I think it's important that you see that and then also your suggestion about a different scenario so what it would look like and you have that available. We'll get that to you. So can we have that like at our second meeting in August? Would that be good, Carolyn? I think you should have it before that so you'll have time to review it. So we'll work on that immediately. Okay. I still would I still would like us to review and I still would like to get rid of that $10 fee for everybody in town. So again, I would like that to be uh, in the equation when we look at uh, what the uh, increase might be for water and sewer. Uh, and then it would be fair and equitable at that point uh, to see what we're doing. So I know that at this point, we don't like to put any more on our businesses, but I think 
as we're coming out of the COVID and businesses are opening up, um, I think we need to relook at that also. I would like to see um, a comparison like we saw when we talked about changing the tax rate about how it will affect households over the spectrum of our residents in terms of how much a 2% or 2.5% increase would affect my water bill, for instance, or your water bill. Similar to what Dan provided. Yes, for, correct. Well, yeah. And, and Joyce, the, the $10 infrastructure fee, it, uh, quite honestly, is to fund future projects that aren't being funded now. Right. I mean, we had water break after water break after water break. We've got to fund these things and it's just not happening. And uh, you folks as water and sewer commissioners, I think can direct that money to where it needs to go. But Susan, at one point in time, before we all decided that we weren't going to increase water and sewer, our sewer and our water uh, accounts were, were at a point where we could fund these things and they're not now. And I understand that. But, but that was in never, truth. But that but was we in never, truth but we never 2007. Increased. Yeah, but we never increased the rate. So we're in a hole. I understand that. Exactly. So, exactly. I understand that. So we need to get back up to where we're having and not tax people for sewer. And I know you're calling it an infrastructure fee, but actually the sewer people, I'm never going to see sewer out here on Bay Road if my life, until the end of my life, I won't see it. No, and, but you would see a whole lot higher uh, tax rate if you don't fund the infrastructure on Route 9. You well, know that, Joyce. <laughs> I, oh, I know that, but people that are using the sewer need to pay for the sewer. I'm not, they're not going to pay for my septic system sewer. Uh, so. I know, Joyce, this is way back when, when they went to the infrastructure <laughs> to separate the water and the sewer so they could be self sufficient. Correct. Not, not coming out of the general funds through taxation. That's what right. I'm trying to explain to you, you know? Yes. And it's a tough decision for us to make, you know? And yeah. If, so if let's, we haven't ignored it for so long, we wouldn't be in a situation we're in right now. So I, exactly. I think we have, what, like another two, four weeks. So I think we can just leave it open. I'm sure we'll be getting you know, some emails or comments and feedback. And well, we, we have there. to hold, we have to hold a public hearing uh, before, yeah. we do change, before we do change any grades. So uh, we're in the process of discussion. We have to hold a public hearing and then we go forward with the following meeting, making any changes. So August 18th with that, is that doable for? Well, that those? would be the changes, but we need to make set and have people informed and have them aware that it will be a public hearing. I, okay, I thought that was the hearing the, the 18th or do we need to do it sooner or soon to make it effective? Well, Dude, what we, Carolyn, I thought, Carolyn, Carolyn, I thought we talked about the, the, the 18th as the public hearing. Yes. So the next is we have to August advertise it. it, right? That's fine, yep. Okay, will we be, can we take comments then during the, public comment section yes, and then, absolutely. then the formal one will be on the 18th and the vote will be September 1st. That, that should be. Well, no, the public no, the hearing vote. has to be the 18th in order so to- So we'll make that decision after the after their comments? Yeah. yeah, we can either do it at the comments or continue until the next meeting. It, it's up to us, whatever we decide. Okay. But you probably won't I, but, make it to the February billing is is the other problem because okay so, so we, we can vote on the 18th allow comments on the 4th and the 18th and then vote then to kind yep. of keep things rolling okay yeah okay. four weeks is enough time for someone to make a comment i think yeah yep. i agree okay okay uh, information 
if the information doesn't come out until the 18th, then they can't make it. They need time to have seen it in advance of the 18th. Well, Carolyn said they're going to get on it right away. Uh, okay. Start working on the the tie-in bond study and, and the other information. So as soon as we get it, we'll we'll get it out there so people can take a look. So okay. we may have that. Um, um, we may have that on the fourth, where we can. Are we doing? You're not. Uh, you're not saying we're going to do another tie-in bond study, right? No, no, no. The existing. No, you don't want another study. Oh no, no. no I don't, Susan. No. no. No, what I was saying is we have the existing time bond study. We have the existing time bond study that goes out until I don't know twenty thirty. Yeah, I'll be dead. And we're I'll be dead by then. <laughs> yeah, just to refresh our memory of no, what was going on in the past. <laughs> the time bond stu study. Will I know, Jen. Our memory and bring our new board members up to snuff enough with with the regulations and and their their findings in the past correct and i have that it, i have that study someplace in my email i can <coughs> send it to carolyn and everybody so yeah chris chris has that chris and i know chris has that as well and um oh both, both chris and yeah. can help, sorry help chris. Me dice it for that yeah all right sounds good Okay, the 18th. We'll Get keep all moving. the board members that information, Caroline. Absolutely. Yahoo. That's the intent. Thank all you. Right. Uh, 7.1 ribbon cutting ceremony date approval. Uh, Caroline, I guess we have September 29th, 2021 for the ribbon cutting ceremony for the three new buildings. So. Yes. I met with uh, Michael, Haley, and Patrick and um, explain to them that it would be a combined ribbon cutting and uh, talked about who the special guests would be in invites and um, that the intent was to give this date to both the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor's scheduler who I've, I've been in contact with both of them. So I did notify them that that is the date, but I wanted your vote that that was the right date before I, I officially announced that to them and started to work on that. So so moved. Sounds good. Thank you Thank very you. much. Also, do we have any sense of time of day? Yes, one o'clock. Sorry about that. One o'clock. I you can't ask the legislators or other state representatives to come and drive back to Boston at the end of the day. So I know that it's hard to get um, the whole all of the residents to be able to fit that into their schedule. Um, but uh, there's going to be other events from the senior center and uh, the library, and I'm sure the, uh, the fire state, the substation, there will be other events to provide more open houses so that people can see that. So that will be separate from a ribbon cutting. All right, so we have a motion by Joyce uh, for the 29th at one, second by Amy. Any other discussion on that? Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call the Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes, and I'll ask for the day off. I'm putting that in the minutes. Let's Thank you. <laughs> Muscovitz? Yes. Will you be taking the day off? Absolutely. He better be. I don't know. I'll yeah. see if the boss will uh, give me the day off. I'm not sure. I'll check with him. That was all eyes. <laughs> Hi. All right. So that's that. OK, uh, Carolyn, anything from the town administrator report you want to hit? Yeah, just real quick, um, DPW has been very busy the past two weeks. The, the real good news is, um, and I, I sent you all that email, uh, that uh, a grant that Chris submitted with some support of some uh, engineers was approved, and we were able to go to an event to accept that. But it's a little over $67,000 uh, for the movie Bridge Culvert. And so I think you all saw, all saw uh, one of Chris's employees, Jamie, um, page picture next to the movie bridge um, so there were people there who did visit it and so that was that was really good news it caught us totally by surprise we had about a two-day warning so that was really good news uh, the other thing dpw i think you've seen has been very busy with this rain so we had a culvert um on a, let's see that was the culvert was on mill valley road they took care of that very quickly and i know today 
uh, that Russell Street, there was another water main break. So they've been very busy for taking care of everything. So um, kudos to everybody at DPW who's taking care of that. Uh, the capital plan request did go out to all the department heads, chairs, and boards and committees. And um, we will be, we're still waiting for some more uh, specifics on the ARPA funding to know whether maybe there's possible infrastructure item, uh, projects that could be funded by that. But certainly we know that lost revenue is gonna be a part of that. They just, just can't seem to get, and it, it, it's the whole state, municipalities haven't been able to get a real clear picture of how that money is gonna be distributed and what projects will um, meet the criteria for that. So that's where we're at, that's it. Thank you very much for doing the grant. I keep having people ask me when that culvert is gonna get done and uh, this is great. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you to Chris. Thank Chris. Thank you very much. All right, and then last on the agenda, we have uh, a business not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Uh, the conservation agent's uh, resignation and the related financial matters. So Carolyn, do you want to start off? Sure. I just, um, I, I just wanted to let you know where we're at uh, with, as you know, Janice Stone um, has resigned and she has another, boy, just another week or two. And um, Janice, I, she is a, a huge asset to the town and she's been with us for many, many years. In fact, I don't think she's even raised her rate of pay since 2007, if I'm correct. So I, as uh, the impact of that, uh, we're working on it in the select board's office, and the town administrator's office is, is doing what we can to um, replace that position. And is, I just wanna be um, very clear to all of you that it's going to take some time. It could be a few months. Um, they also, uh, mass dot hearings, uh, we did have a hearing Conservation held a hearing last week and uh, spent a great deal of time looking at the quorum issue. And uh, that, that there was a lot of discussion between town council at that meet, our town council, as well as MassDOT engineers. And um, to say that they're not exactly on the same page, I guess that's the best way to put it. But I did want to let you know without having Janice. Um, the, the legal fees, just full disclosure, the legal fees will be um, probably significant. We've already spent a significant amount on legal fees to um, deal with the issue of the hearings and the makeup of the forum and who's been able to attend the hearings. So I want to, I want to just be able to update you with that, um, the legal fees to help with that, as well as any additional hearings or projects that may be coming up. They're not going to be Obviously, uh, town council can't address all of the um, stormwater and wetland regulations, but they can be there to help if there's questions. So we will be having our attorneys be sitting at that meeting. So um, I just wanted to let you all know that where we're at and um, that we are working. I'm, I'm doing my due diligence to look at every option to replace Janice as far as other towns who may be looking for a part-time, whether there be an option to combine that. But Things like that still take a great deal of time. So we're gonna be a few months. Um, from my perception, based on what I'm hearing out in the field about the difficulty of finding um, an agent um, is, is gonna be a challenge. So I just wanted to make sure you all were aware of that. Thank you for the update, Carolyn. Is the DOT hearing, uh, they have a an, another hearing tomorrow, you said? Yes. And then is that the last part of it or, or what's what's next, I guess, for. No, um, it does not. It's it's it, I think there's there's more to it and that here a lot will be decided tomorrow night, in which direction mass dot goes in. So, no, it's not over. OK. All right. So I would like to ask the board if we really want to reconsider this action we took about the Conservation Commission. That part is not on the agenda this evening. Well, the financial relations, I mean, Linda Sanderson's letter that I got yesterday, and I assume you all read it, um, talks about what that's done to our town budget. 
and the costs that are going to be incurred. And Carolyn just mentioned some of those. And I think we really have to look at things that may have uh, come out of our decision that we had not anticipated and be able to look and say in the best interest of the town, maybe we should reconsider. I think that's going to be on the agenda for our first meeting in August. Is that not correct, David? Yep, uh, we have made the announcement for letters of interest for the two open positions. And uh, I think it went out with the announcement, but we were planning on sending all the names and qualifications over to the four remaining conservation members for their review and I guess ranking or recommendation of those individuals to send back to the select board to make a decision on the fourth, uh, since they would be better better qualified to know what a what a qualified person is for those positions. I don't uh, hear that being a discussion of our past action. I hear that talking about appointing new people. Can we add a discussion of our past action to that agenda? I'm not interested in revisiting a vote that we already made, but that's just me. Uh, if the rest of the board is, then. I'm looking to see what happens on August 4th and in, in closing, uh, seeing what we have for applicants for the uh, Conservation Commission. Can I add a comment? Always. Sure. Okay. I don't really know what I'm allowed to do <laughs> sometimes. Um, I wanted to just make a comment um, and directly to Janice, just because, um, you know, even there was uh, one person in particular that stood out to me that did make a verbal comment to me um, that while they were happy with the decision that we did make, um, that they said that Janice was always easy to work with. And the person that made that comment to me isn't always an easy person to work with. So I just wanted you to know that. And they're actually very sorry to see you that you're leaving. But that was the only comment that I had. Yeah, no, um, I see Janice is here and we don't have another meeting scheduled before she's scheduled to depart at the end of the month. So I will say, um, everything I've heard and I just say working with you with the project coordination meetings over the last I don't know year or so that they've been in effect uh, you know I see Tommy's here too and I, I know you've been a, a great asset to have in those meetings and to help projects uh, move along smoothly so you, you you will be missed and we appreciate your uh, your work thank I and I, I I certainly would like to ask Janice if she would reconsider uh, and staying in her position. I know that she's not happy with um, the decision that we made, uh, but I have also received numerous phone calls um, over the past week uh, on people that have supported our decision. Um, and these are people that are not willing, and uh, maybe that's not a good thing for them, but it's at least um, they have supported our decision they have said that Janice has been very good in, in replying and doing things um, that needs to be done. And um, the thing that concerns me is that, you know, you're not going to be there and I wish that you would reconsider. Um, but these people that have made concerns and thanked us for making the decision we made um, are afraid of retaliation from a conservation commission if we did reappoint other members. So that has been in my mind right now. Um, I will contemplate over the next couple of weeks until we have our next meeting. Uh, but Janice, I would really much appreciate it if you would consider uh, staying on and supporting the Conservation Commission of the members that did stay on. And I thank you for your uh, work that you have done. Yeah, uh, me also. Uh, Janice, I worked with you over there at Billy Nabala's property for a washout on uh, drainage, and you also showed up at the Chamura Road drainage project when we replaced that ditch. You're great to work with, 
you know, you, you do know what you're doing for sure. I wish you wouldn't go. I have a different concern about the board taking we will not take a complaint in writing unless it's signed. I do not think we should use as evidence things that people are not willing to put their name on. We do not want to live in a town where people are afraid of reprisals and we have to get rid of that attitude and it's as this board's problem to do that. Well, somebody that I mentioned last week, Jane, uh, about the what they had dealt with with the Conservation Commission, I asked for them to write a letter. And you know what they said to me? They heard that she said, shame on them for uh, them complaining. So, and they just don't want to have any more dealings with the Conservation Commission. And that's pretty sad. So, I mean, there are a lot of things out there that are an undertow that people are not aware of. So, you know, I'm going to let Dogs lie right now, and I'm not going to say anything more tonight. Well, I would just say thank you for the kind words, and I, I don't think you folks realize um, that Paulette and I were really a team, and together we tried to make everything work for everyone. And there are always a few dissatisfied customers, and I believe that that's sort of what's behind a lot of this. And we're still waiting to get those dozens and dozens of complaints that were mentioned at a previous select board meeting. And I expect there will be some, and I'm sorry that there are some, and it would have been much better if we could have found out about that earlier and tried to work on it um, rather than have it come out this way. And um, Paulette, it was the most important person on that commission in terms of knowledge, experience, and getting things done. And things are gonna be very difficult for the four remaining and whoever you get for two new people. Um, and especially if you can't get someone else in to take care of the office for a while, answering the phones, helping people to fill out forms, scheduling their site visits and um, agenda items, getting the background paperwork to the Conservation Commission members, all that sort of stuff um, is really going to lag now. And one solution, I, I realize you don't wanna do it, but to me, the easiest solution is to reappoint Paulette and uh, things at least fall back into place a little bit, but um, I know you have your own opinions and that's fine too. So. I, just wanted to let you know we worked together. Um, it wasn't it wasn't just me. It was both of us. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, so, Carolyn, one of the things you were working on was possibly combining that position with uh, some of the needs of the planning board. I, I don't know if that was brought up to them last night uh, or or not. And I know town hall needs a couple more hours as well. Is that? Is that the plan now, or are we just trying to find someone to do the conservation agent job? So definitely still in the exploring stage. I met with Bill Dwyer, um, Ed O'Connor, and Janice was kind enough to sit in with us just to let us know the, the scope of what her responsibilities are. I'm trying to get, you know, I know that there before my time, there was a lot of discussion about a planner. And um, unfortunately, we, don't, we didn't plan for funding for that for this year. So we're trying to find out if there's an option of hiring a, um, a part-time position to help with uh, some of the administrative issue um, challenges that boards like Plan ZBA have as far as taking minutes and taking appointments and taking schedules. Um, it's I think I think Janice, it was a land court. What no land? I'm land, sorry, use. land use land use clerk which would impact some of those boards. Um, and then, so we're trying to look at the same time, trying to find out where some of the gaps are uh, within town hall. As you know, many of the boards, including ours, has a challenge with keeping up with minutes and getting those minutes out. Um, that, is, that is not um, uh, unique to Hadley at all. Um, many towns challenge, are challenged with that, but um, I know planning board um, really has not had the focus on hours to help with that. So right now that's kind of a, we're looking at that on how to advertise that position and then to come back to you to get some um, input from the select board to find out if that's the direction that you want to go in. 
Uh, but again, that position, just looking at what's out there on the Mass Municipal Association um, and some of the other organizations that are, deal with conservation agents, um, it is not an easy position to fill right now. But we are doing it. I'm, I'm also talking to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, to talk about shared services, but that, that is, takes several months to happen. Okay. Anything else on that? Okay, any announcements? I don't I have like any this evening. I would like to put a couple of things on next month, next meeting's agenda. One is um, I would like to get back to the Goldman Court discussion about um, holding the housing authority to follow their rules. I'm getting complaints of people and I have them in writing um, who have filed grievances and they have not had the grievance process followed. They've simply been ignored. I also um, wonder when we're going to um, meet the request for the, um, from the purchasers of the North Hadley Village Hall that wanted to have a meeting with us. Should that be on next time's agenda? And when are we going to discuss the open meeting violation that Paulette has filed against us? So Golden Court, um, Caroline, I know we're working with the our legislators on legislators on that. Uh, is that back in our court, or are they working on that, or where do we stand? Uh, I, I haven't even. Okay. I'd, I'd have to get refreshed on what the issues are. To be honest with you, I, okay. We'll, we'll put it on the agenda for your next uh, next meeting, and we'll. Thank you. I'll catch up on that. Um, and I can address the open meeting, the open, uh, I'm sorry, public records requests. Um, yep. That needed to go back to legal. Um, there were some personal information that needed to be redacted, so they needed to go through it and for, uh, uh, legal to write a formal response or written response, and we did receive that later on, later, late today. So we'll be getting that out. And uh, the open meeting violation or open meeting complaint that Paulette filed uh, against uh, the select board. Uh, do we need to respond to that tonight? Or I know it went to the, to the state as well at the same time as the uh, town clerk. And I know normally when it goes to the town clerk, the board responds. And then if the uh, complainant is not happy, then that goes to the attorney general's office. But since it went to both, I mean, what's our, what's our path forward there? Jennifer, did you review that? Uh, what Jeffrey had responded. Thank you. I'm so, sorry. No problem. I'm um, feeling great today. So, <laughs> um, so uh, Jeffrey Blake has responded to Scott Mersbach's public records request. He is still working on a public records request from Paulette. And then she also filed an open meeting complaint. That open meeting complaint is with our town council right now. And we were waiting for the response for him um, before we bring it back to y'all for y'all to... Um, discuss it and address it in your meeting. But it is with council and the town has, we did um, inform Paulette that we had received it. So she knows that we have it and we are addressing it. And then if you don't mind, Carolyn, I'll tackle North Hadley Please. too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I did call and talk to one of the purchasers and um, let them know that obviously we could not take it up tonight um, but uh, they did discuss their concerns. I don't think they need to be discussed in, in an open meeting situation. I was going to talk to Carolyn and the chair, David, about maybe scheduling a short meeting with them to do an executive session maybe next week just to address that. I know the thought of that might not sound so great in the middle of summer, but um, they have some concerns that they they would like to, to discuss with y'all and um, it can't happen in open meeting and it can't do one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what I think would be the best choice is to have a, a, a meeting with them in executive session. Okay, well, let's find a time that works and we'll figure it out. And okay. we meet with them. Uh, if we need an executive session, that's fine. If we need to just a meeting between, you know, a representative from the select board and Carolyn and yourself, that's fine too. Okay. I'll, I'll work with Carolyn and uh, Jeff Blake, who's also been in, in, in step all the way with North Hadley Village Hall and um, with what Carolyn and Jeff recommend, we'll go from there. Okay. 
Sounds good. Jane, did I get, uh, you had three or four, did I get them all? You got them all, thank you. All right, great. And then uh, any other announcements? I don't have any tonight. All right. All right. Oh, the, the banner that we approved earlier, my understanding is they'd like to put that up either on the, in the front of town hall temporarily or Russell School, one or the other. I know that uh, the donors are working with, um, uh, I think they're going to talk to Gary about where, where it could be put up, but they wanted a vis visible location since uh, this is the first time in 30 five years, 32 years that we won a championship. So uh, keep an eye out for a, for a 16 foot banner congratulating that baseball team. I, I don't think, think, I don't think we have a barn on route nine like we did before. So I guess we'll have to, you know, find something else. Yeah. <laughs> I think the open space in front of Russell school is an easier visibility than in front of town hall. Yeah, we were talking about a sign out there for advertisements and we never followed through with that either at some point. Right. We well, if they haven't won in what, 35 years? Why is it only 16 feet long? I know. <laughs> it should be 35 feet long. <laughs> if they want to put it on the side of town hall, I'm all in favor of that too. So whatever they want to do is fine with me. Yeah. We'll work it out with the DPW and uh, it's being it's being done. I was told that no cost to the town. So if they have to stick some posts in the ground or whatever, they're going to take care of it. So um, so no cost to us. No, I'm all in favor of it. Actually, congratulations. It's a great honor. And, and thank you to those who made the donation of the sign. You know who you are. They didn't want credit for it publicly, but thank you. Aww. Yes, thank them. All right. Well, if that's it, if I could get a motion to adjourn. Motion so to moved. adjourn. Uh, second. Joyce, second by Amy, and roll call Jennifer. Roll call Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. See you on the fourth. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right.